Hi, my name is Ross and welcome to the very first video on this channel. I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this grim, dark, natural look on your Tyranid models. It's super easy and quick to do, so you can get an army painted and on the table for very little effort. I'm using one of the large models in the range, but this tutorial will work for any Tyranid model. The first step will be to prime the model black and then to give the entire model a few thin coats from above with wraith bone, making sure to keep the deeper recesses darker. I'm using an airbrush for this, but this can easily be done with a spray can. Concentrate this colour on the flesh areas and don't worry too much about the carapace and the armour because this is going to be painted black anyway. When this is all dry, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. All of the raised areas have been highlighted and the recesses have been left darker. For the next step, you'll need some Griff Hound Orange Contrast Paint. Start applying this to the areas of the flesh, mainly around the face, any joints, and any way you feel like really. Just try to keep it looking natural. Try to get stripes and areas of orange and the original bone colour all over the model. I'm using an airbrush for this, but this could easily be done with a normal brush. This is just a little quicker, and makes the transitions of the colours easier to do. When this is done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. The next step is to add some Black Legion contrast paint to the carapace and all the spikes, claws and the tongue. This is a great paint, the only black I use now. It's got great coverage with only one coat and has a really nice matte finish. Give all of the armour a coat of this and be sure to get all the little claws and the spikes. I missed quite a few and had to go back and correct it. I purposely let some of the black spill over onto the flesh around the armour. I found that on the test models that this helped to make it look more natural and organic and helped to blend everything together. Again, all of this step with the black can easily be done without an airbrush. It's just a case of going around the entire model and making sure you pick out all of the little details and not to miss anything. You should have something that looks a little bit like this. All of the black hair is blocked in and ready for the next step. The armour and the claws need some texture. You'll need some corvus black and a sponge. Get a load on the sponge and remove the excess on some paper towel and then start to heavily stipple all over the black armour. This will add some subtle texture to the armour and break up all those flat panels. It's very subtle but the corvus black really does help to break the panels up and just makes the model look far more interesting. I then added some highlights using some eshing grey and a dry brush. Get a good amount on the brush and remove most of it on some paper towel. Once you're happy, just start to flick the brush over the raised areas of the armour and the claws. This will leave a nice highlight on all of the raised edges. I then wanted to add some more colour. Using a pure white, I started to put stripes down the centre of the carapace and the head. I used a white ink for this, but any white paint will do. And if you don't have an airbrush, you can use some sponge and stipple this on. It works just as well, this is just a little faster. Take your time with this step. It's far easier to add more white than to take it off. That said, if you do make a mistake, you can just cover back up with black and start again. I put the white on slightly heavier in certain places and lighter in others. This will help to make the model look more natural when the next step is added. I then added some athematic blue contrast paint over all of the white areas, giving them a nice blue tint. This blue really contrasts against the orange and adds a good pop of colour to the model. I then went in with the same blue using a brush this time and added some around the eyes and the back of the head and also around some of the armour panels and claws. I also added this blue between the ribs and put some banding on the tail as well. Nearly done now, I went back to the wraith bone and painted in the teeth and added a few coats of Uriel yellow to the eyes. I then made a 50-50 mix of the yellow and the wraith bone and gave a quick highlight to each of the eyes. Next I gave the whole model a couple of very thin coats of gloss varnish. I'm using Ard Coat from Citadel but any gloss will do. I made sure to completely cover the entire model with the varnish, 
before leaving it to dry for a few hours before starting the next step. I then cover the entire model with streaking grime. If you've never used this stuff before, it can be quite daunting as it looks like you've destroyed all of your hard work, but stick with it and it gives great results for minimal effort. This is how it should look, a complete mess. I left this to dry for about 20 minutes and then started using some cotton buds and kitchen towels soaked in white spirit and used these to clean off the streaking grime. I concentrated on cleaning it off the raised areas and allowed it to naturally blend into the recesses. This can be a bit scary if you've never done it before, but it's actually quite an easy process. The white spirit will reactivate the streaking grime, but leave all of the other paints and varnish underneath unaffected. I went over the whole mod like this and then left it for 24 hours to dry. This is the result, a natural looking, scary, grim dark Tyranid. If you've picked up the new Leviathan box, this is a great scheme to get those amazing new models done quickly and ready for games. I really hope you found this helpful, and if you decide to give it a go, tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see some pictures of them. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all soon.